you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, Seal, Alabama. And um, we are, the first thing we're gonna do today is we are going to a drive-through museum. Now in these modern times, um, a drive-through museum seems like a really good idea, a really safe attraction to experience. And this uh, drive-through museum was created by folk artist Butch Anthony. Um, Butch Anthony used to have, or maybe he still does, he had on his property at a museum called the Alabama Museum of wonder and apparently um, it became it was on his property so apparently it became problematic as people would come to see the museum while he was trying to work and he could never get any work done so in order to display his museum and his work he created a drive-through museum a, a drive-through extension of the Alabama Museum of Wonder here for anyone who wants to see to drive through and we are about ready drive through that museum. Follow me. Look at that, made out of old semi-cargo boxes. And uh, yeah, let's drive through. You can see in that Airstream there. Ooh, there's a bunch of cool stuff. Oh, look over here, oh wow. Look at that. Oh, oh, I look real quick. Oh. Very, very cool. Now, as cool as driving through that was, I think it would behoove us to maybe park the car and get out and take a little bit of a closer look. All right. Well, let's uh, take a closer look here. Got an Airstream trailer with uh, windows cut out. What do we have here? A craw ball. This object fell from outer space and landed in Pittsview. It was also found by the mayor of Pittsview. Look, we have a paper animatomic skeleton there. We have a mummified cat. That is, that is a horrifying face on that mummified cat. And it uh, looks like he has his buddy there with him, the mummified rat. You can see that unfortunate taxidermy duck with quite a few six pack plastic rings around his neck. Every skull has its thorns. Over here, it says make cornbread, not war. I do believe cornbread is indeed better than killing people. And here we have a call for Willie Nelson for president. You know, Willie Nelson, I always think of him as one of, one of the few human beings that everybody likes. If you don't like Willie Nelson, leave a comment in the comment section. And of course, we need to support our local roadside attractions. This is where they ask for donations. You slip it into the mouth of this face right here. They ask for $1, which is fairly generous. I will uh, give my donation to the mouth. Come on, eat it. There we go. this little army of baby chicks. I guess these are like old, looks like from an old printing press. Circuit City. It's a clever joke, but uh, maybe a little bit uh, outdated. It says, shut up and kiss me. We got a happy little alligator there. Have this crazy looking dog creature there. And then here's one of the, the crowning objects of the Alabama Museum of Wonder, the world's largest gallstone. It says red-winged blackbird. When I was a kid, someone told me that red-winged blackbirds were a super violent creature that they would chase you and, and, and attack you. Um, is that true? I always think back on that, I always wondered are red-winged blackbirds really a scary creature? It says, I want to do right, but not right now. I believe that is a uh, lyric from a Jillian Welsh song, um, Miss Ohio. And uh, But that there you see four cops pointing their guns at a jar of fun. I don't know what is inside that one. A couple other jars here. 
oh my gosh that is quite a piece of uh, taxidermy there one of the dogs ears is uh, directly on top of his head and the others in a more normal place for an ear look at that mummified chicken right there it's only missing its head down here we see various items that's uh, I guess George Washington's teeth right there uh, dirt oh over there we got dirt from Hank Williams grave there are some uh, Bigfoot shoes there I guess where you can go and make a uh, fake big footprints I guess this is what happens when you let your jars of fun dry up that vicious cat back there up here I think that is a giant frog made out of uh, the bones of other creatures this here one of the coolest pieces here in the Alabama Museum of Wonder this is a replica of hell um, that was used by a traveling preacher in the 1930s. You get a close look here, we can see there is a two-headed giant chopping off the heads of sinners. Some freaky hellish bird monster. Um, oh, these people are carrying around their own heads after they've been chopped off. See that creature there, uh, Eating people. It's almost like it reminds me of like a uh, a uh, Harryhausen uh, stop motion film with the different creatures. And then that big thing right there almost looks like the hodag. Um, if you look in its mouth, you can actually see there's some sort of me mechanism that opens and closes its mouth. I wonder if that was like an animatronic at one point. To the giant hell lizard devouring lost souls. And then some sort of demonic. Kraken. It's amazing how large and thorough this display is. Just look at some of the twisted things going on. I think this guy had a lot of fun designing this. And then on top of this hellish display is the face of an alligator gar. There's a cow ant, which is definitely an interesting mashup. You can see the little coyote there peeking around the corner we got an alligator head and then uh, poor little creature there see that rainbow colored cow oh here's some interesting oddities got a two-headed baby chick so that was a pocket watch found growing inside a potato um, in the garden of Miss Eula Bankston. That is a collection of items removed from the esophaguses of young children. This ring was found also growing inside a potato. Uh, a lot of things growing inside potatoes in this area. I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. Don't know what these big metal balls are. Does anyone know what these are? These oh maybe these are are these wrecking balls? I don't know. How can I miss you when you won't go away? So we're gonna keep driving through Alabama and see uh, just what else there is to see along the Alabama roadside. So we've stopped off in the town of Eufaula, Alabama. And the first thing I wanted to see is this tree right here. This is no ordinary tree. It may look like an ordinary tree, but this tree owns itself. Now, longtime viewers of this channel may remember that I visited a different tree that owns itself in Athens, Georgia. But it turns out there's at least two trees in America that own themselves. Now you may ask yourself, how can a tree own property? How, how can a tree pay, pay property tax? It, it, shut up! You can see it really is quite a beautiful tree. It's got a little plaque here explaining the situation. The tree that owns itself. 
Now in the 1930s, the mayor of Eufaula declared that, that, that a tree, a beautiful tree, could own itself and deeded the land to the tree. Unfortunately, this uh, tree is actually the second tree that owns itself. This tree inherited itself and the land right here because uh, the original tree that uh, owned itself was blown down in a windstorm in the 60s. But uh, the town rededicated, declared that this tree would inherit the property. Only God can make a tree. Now Eufaula's claim to fame is that it is the big bass capital of the world. But this is not the only monument to a bass here in Eufaula. You see right here in the middle of Main Street in Eufaula, Alabama, they have the gravestone of a fish, Leroy Brown. It's actually a pretty fascinating story why there is a fish's tombstone here in the middle of Eufaula. There was a local bass fisherman by the name of Tom Mann. And one day, and I guess, I don't know why he was doing this, but he went, uh, he was fishing with gummy worms. I don't know if this was just something he did on a lark or maybe an idea he had, but he caught a bass with a strawberry gummy worm. And he decided that he liked the fish so much that he was not going to eat it. He was not going to release it. He was going to keep it as a pet. And he kept uh, the fish for the rest of the fish's natural life as a pet. And he named the fish Leroy Brown after the popular song of the time. I believe this is in the 1970s. Bad, bad Leroy Brown. And the fish would become a tourist attraction. People would come and want to meet Leroy Brown. Apparently Leroy would learn tricks. Apparently he could jump out of his aquarium through a hoop. So a beloved local figure, the bass Leroy Brown. Here in the ba big bass capital of the world, you follow Alabama, Leroy Brown. And he was so beloved that when he did die, and he died of natural causes, that um, they would have a funeral. And 800 people came to a fish's funeral. Apparently they, the, the local high school band played Bad Bad Leroy Brown at the funeral. But uh, he was not buried at his funeral. Uh, Tom would, apparently it was raining and did not, I guess he didn't want to bury it, bury the fish on a, uh, in the mud, so he was waiting for a better day to bury the fish. Whatever the reason, he took the fish and put it in a walk-in cooler. And someone stole the corpse of the fish. The fish was uh, spotted at a local airport when um, the, the luggage handlers, I don't know if it was TSA at the time, but uh, they smelled rotten fish in someone's luggage and they found that they were smuggling the body of Leroy Brown. Who steals a beloved dead fish? That is a completely insane and maniacal thing to do. But by the time the fish was brought back to Tom, it had decroated too much and he was unable to be buried because I guess he was just, just turned into rotten mush and was thrown away. But uh, the, the gravestone was still made and in 2016, so, so fairly recently, uh, someone who had the gravestone in their possession dedicated it to the town and they erected it here, right in the middle of Main Street. As the inscription says, most bass are just fish, but Leroy Brown was something special. So we have stopped off here in Enterprise, Alabama. I wanted to see one of my favorite civic monuments. And that is the monument to the bull weevil right here in the middle of traffic here in Enterprise, Alabama. So the story behind the bull weevil monument, the bull weevil is actually a bug that destroys crops, particularly cotton. And here at Enterprise, it used to be a cotton growing community. The bug, the bull weevil destroyed their cotton crop. This forced them to switch to growing peanuts, which led to economic prosperity 
turns out that growing peanuts was far more profitable than growing cotton. So they thanked this destructive bug. Most people would still be angry at the bug, very the destructive force that ruined their crop. But no, the town of Enterprise, they thanked the bull weevil, thanked the bull weevil for making them look at other options, searching other options, and leading to true success. And this story, when I came here years ago and saw the, the, the Bull Weevil Monument and heard that story, it greatly inspired me. It inspired me so much, I actually have a Bull Weevil tattooed on my arm. It reminded me a lot of uh, kind of the story of, of, of this channel. I had been doing this channel um, for, for years. This was originally a hobby, and um, I was working Child Protective Services uh, as a job. Worked at Child Protective Services for 10 years. Um, as I um, my channel began to grow and began to take form, um, I, I was the victim of some harassment, some cyberbullying, if you will. And um, people would call my work, write letters to my work. Um, I don't really know why, other than just to try to bother me or harass me because they didn't like my channel or I had maybe upset them uh, somehow and, um, and I was uh, given the option of actually I wasn't given the option my work told me I could no longer have my YouTube channel they had asked me to get rid of it to delete it and um, I knew at that point that um, I could not give up my channel. I'd worked too hard. I put too much of my blood, sweat, and tears into the channel to give it up. So I put in my notice, my two-week notice that day. Um, I was not making enough money to uh, so to support my family with YouTube. I just knew that I couldn't. I could not. Um, I could not live with myself if I gave up my uh, my uh, YouTube channel. It just it was too much of a part of me. So um, I gave up my job. I gave. I put in my two weeks notice and gave up my job. And um, I think it's gonna be really, it's really, really easy for me to be angry. And I went through periods where I was very angry at my job, at the people that put me in a unfair position. But in the end, that is just like the bull weevil here in Enterprise, Alabama. Um, you know, I lost my job. I lo I lost something that helped me provide for my family, something that I, I worked very hard for that job, and I put a lot of work into that job, but I was forced to give it up. And it allowed me to put everything I had into this channel, put all the fire I had behind this channel, and the channel grew from that point. So really, I have to almost thank the people. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna directly thank them, but almost thank you know what? I will. Thank you. The people that, um, that, that that sent letters to my work, that called my boss, just to just just to just to bully me, just to harass me. They caused this channel to grow. They caused me to take the leap that I apparently wasn't ready to take yet, but ended up paying off in the long run. And now I get to do this full time. I get to do something I love, a hobby that evolved into a job full time, and that. That's why I have this bull weevil on my arm. Because every time I get every time I get mad, I think about the past and think about maybe I was treated unfairly, but in the end it was a bull weevil. It was something something that, that, that tried to hurt me, but ended up greatly improving my life. You can see that it's right smack dab in the middle of traffic. A little hard to get to, but uh, you can see it looks like there is uh, who's the Dr. Seuss species uh, wrapped around at the bottom of the, the monument there for Christmas. All right, we're gonna get a little closer here. The Bow Weevil Fountain. You can see the goddess there holding up the Bull Weevil to the sky. That ugly little bug that helped this town so much. I'm sort of stuck here in the middle of the street. Let's look, look for an opening. I love this WVVL, their radio station. Guess it would be, you're listening to WVVL, The Weevil. See at Fashion World, they sell this artificial human hair that you can use as extensions. 
guess you could say it's a weave. Oh. It does look like the town has put up a uh, Dr. Seuss display all through the downtown area. In this store window, they have a full-sized Grinch. See there, the Weevil Nut Company. It does appear every single um, store here has a Dr. Seuss theme incorporated. You can see this one is uh, wearing the facial masks. This Grinch is slightly terrifying. See the bottom part is a tree. The top is a ghoulish Jim Carrey version of the Grinch. I think I just put it together. You see, the Who's, the Who's, when, when the Grinch stole all their presents, they, 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 they went out and they sang. They sang in the streets. They, 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 the Grinch could not stop their Christmas. Just like, just like the Bull Weevil could not stop, could not stop the, the, the farming industry. So this, here, Enterprise Alabama, the real live Whoville. You can see these murals here. It says, Lil Weevil. Fear no Weevil. The art studio here, all about art, has this giant multicolored bull weevil in the window. He's got a giant paintbrush. This is the Pea River Historical and Genealogical Society gift shop and library. So we see Santa reading How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Here in the window we have the original bull weevil monument. Apparently in 1998, someone stole the bull weevil off the top of the statue by cutting the statue's arms off. If we look down here, we can see the arms and uh, they, they had destroyed the statue. It could not be repaired, so it had to be replaced. But the bull weevil was found. And here it sits in the windows. Apparently someone buried it underground and it was later located. So that's the original bull weevil right there. Here at the local gym, you can see they have a bull weevil pumping iron with the hashtag swole weevil. Also, there's a bunch of shoes hanging up here. Now we are now in Dothan, Alabama. And Dothan, Alabama claims to be the peanut capital of the world. I think I feel like I've been showing a lot of peanuts on this channel recently, but, 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 but Dothan claims to be the capital. So let's see what Dothan has to offer in peanut tourism. Here at the Dothan Visitor Center, they have this shiny golden peanut glimmering in the sun. But this is not the only peanut in town. Here they have a complimentary Dothan peanut maps that will apparently lead us to other peanuts. Good Lord, I didn't know what I was getting myself into here. There is, there is 62 different uh, peanuts here in, uh, in Dothan. Um, how to get to work. The visitor center is actually closed due to COVID right now. We can peek in the window and see that there is an Elvis peanut inside. All right, seriously, there are so many peanuts. I don't even, I don't even know where to start. All right, so there's supposed to be a peanut here at the Golden Corral, and I don't see one outside, so this one must be indoors as well. All right, there's the peanut. His name tag says celery, which is confusing. But there he is. Pretty, pretty massive. All right, spotted this one outside of the three minute car wash. We have this, I don't know, he looks like the sheriff here. His name is Wild Blue. He's a, I guess he's a sheriff, but he's also a car washing peanut. Look at that. 
Look at that mustache on that peanut. Oh look, he's got a uh, little scrub brush there in his holster. Next to the car wash, we have this colorful, yet decrepit, abandoned castle. I was wondering what this was, but apparently it is the pizza castle, or at least it is the former pizza castle. No pizzas left in this castle. Now over there at Chick-fil-A, I don't see a peanut, but there is a dancing cow just uh, getting down. Oh boy, dancing cow. Here outside of the ADS security, we have an ADS security peanut. And uh, the other peanuts we've seen haven't been wearing uh, facial covering, so thank you, Mr. ADS peanut. I don't know what's going on with his hand. It's covered in blue tape. Maybe someone uh, tried to steal his hand, but uh, he was able to secure it back to his body. He's got a little name tag there. His name is Homer D. Fender. Oh, Home D. Fender. Very clever, Mr. Peanut. Although we don't have a smoking peanut outside of the tobacco shop. Now, as we cross the street here, we'll see another one of Dothan's claims to fame. This is the smallest city block in the world, dedicated May 1st, 1964, the world's smallest city block. Now it is small. It is small, I must admit. And that's the kind of spirit I like to see in these small towns. Most small towns would just say, it's a median, but no. Here in Dothan, it is the smallest city block in the world. Here in front of the Dothan Civic Center, we have the Kiss Goodbye to Breast Cancer Peanut. This pink peanut, painted pink, in uh, celebration of breast cancer awareness. It's a cool little statue right here. This little kid uh, playing, it looks like he's playing guitar, but he's using a bow and wearing oversized glasses. But really, <laughs> really cool sculpture. Supposed to be a peanut here at the Choice Inn, but the Choice Inn doesn't look all that open. No, I do believe that the peanut must have checked out of the Choice Inn. We are at the Dothan Police Department, and there we have a police officer who is a peanut. This peanut hunting is, is harder than it looks. I've been driving in circles. I have been uh, searching for peanuts. Some peanuts appear to be indoors. A lot of places are closed. Um, I'm, I'm, there should be a peanut on the corner of Main and Foster, but I did not see it. Oh, look at this though. Behind these bars, we see a peanut lady. It says Top Chef on her jacket. She's holding out a glass of wine and a delicious platter of oysters. Oh, those look pretty good. I could I could go for some oysters about now. All right, the sun is setting, but we're gonna find as many peanuts as we can before the end of the day. All right, here at the Healthcare Resource Center, we have this helpful peanut asking us if we need help with Medicare. We are here in the parking lot of Ameris Bank and in the headlights of my car, we have this. Captain Cash is his name. He is a superhero peanut, some sort of banking superhero peanut. And look at those muscles. He has rippling biceps. He's got yellow eyes. Very, very cool. A superhero we deserve. In the glowing shadow of Krispy Kreme Donuts, we have Sheriff Sam, the Cowboy Peanut. And here we are, as the sun sets on Alabama, we stand in the shadow of this massive peanut. So thank you for joining me today 
as we travel across Alabama. Look how big that peanut is. I think that might be the world's biggest. I know the one in Ashburn, Georgia has fallen down. So I think this right here is our biggest peanut. I think it might be bigger than the one in Ashburn. Look at that as uh, the sun sets in the background. But thank you for joining me uh, on our adventure today. Um, finding those peanuts was really more hard than I thought it would be. I, I missed so many. I don't, I don't know how many I got. You can count them, but uh, there's so many more. 62 peanuts in all. Some of them are not where they said they were, so I don't know. There may be less than 62, but uh, come out to Dotham, Alabama and see if you can find more peanuts than I did. Uh, thank you for joining me here. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also, now selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that information is in the description. Until next time, this one's in the bag.